Alistair. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for letting me, inviting me to your wonderful flat in Highgate. Um, as we, as I look into your room, I know you've pulled these out especially for me. Um, because I knew you as an actor, a storyteller, a teacher, but I didn't know that you were a choreographer and dancer. So your flat is filled with fabulous images. Far away. So, Alistair Bain, raconteur, teacher, actor, choreographer, actually playwright as well. Tell me about it. And, but the one I'm interested in today, Alistair, is the discovery that I made, that you were a dancer in the 50s. Yep. 60s. Yep. Um, you choreographed. Yes. Very much. So, tell me a bit about that. Well, I had a dance company, actually. Mm -hmm. That's how I started choreographing. I had a dance company um, in Grenada. And um, this happened, this dance company. We friends got together and decided to, um, you know, experiment because we had no dance teachers at home at the time. And we started a dance company and then it landed in my lap because everyone said, oh, you, you are going to lead. And um, I accepted with the help of my friends. I didn't do it totally alone, but I ended up doing it completely alone. Because you know what happens, you start something and eventually leadership is a very difficult thing. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was um, left holding the baby with the bath water, but it was fun. It's my learning process. Okay, Alistair. Let's dive straight back into the narrative. You had a company called Be We Ballet. Be We Ballet. Why was it called ballet? British West Indian Ballet. It's our form of a ballet. And actually, I didn't give it that name. It's a gentleman called Dudley Slinger, who was Caucasian Grenadian, pianist, spent a lot of time in England. And he said, that's catchy, Alistair. Use it. Biwi was very fashionable to be with this, be with that, Biwi Airways, Biwi whatever. I said, call it Biwi Ballet. No one's ever called anything ballet as such in the Caribbean. We have Caribbean dance or whatever, dancers. So it was unique in a way and it caught on. But it's interesting you said because it's, uh, it was your ballet because it is about your narrative. Because what is ballet about? It's a story um, that's told in a form that is the form of Europe at that point in time and it's become classical but it's still a narrative on stories and myths it deals with myths uh -huh. and legends and it's the same thing your stories were dealing with yes so it makes sense to call it ballet it did yeah because yeah. ballet is not just about necessary being on the tippy toe nope all right no. so that's interesting um can you tell me some of the things and the people you studied with in the caribbean well, I, when I started, there was no dance teach as such. Mm -hmm. um, my first lesson in dance, really, if you want to put it that way, was when I went to Jamaica. I went mm -hmm. to a seminar there. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, I met Jean Coggins in Grenada, who did, showed me a few dance steps because I was always on that path. Mm -hmm. And everyone who came who can dance or uh, dance out, pick their brains. But uh, the main thing is I went to Jamaica um, for three weeks. There was this seminar where we were invited. Um, the artists from the Caribbean to the seminar that you see in Jamaica. And this is where I first learned. And I was excited, terrified, happy, because I've never had a lesson I've never been taught before. And suddenly here I am presented with all forms of dance, jazz, folk dance, modern ballet, ballet, and I thought, my God, I thought I was a dancer? No way. I've just started now. I haven't scratched the surface yet. And that was the beginning of me. When I went back home, my, my ideas changed. Discipline changed. Because you are not a dancer. It's art. You've got to have a formula. You've got to have some discipline. Right? 
You've got to have, in actual fact, as you were speaking, it is about language. So therefore, what you did, you knew and you were, you all were developing a language of expression in Grenada. Mm -hmm. And when you went to Jamaica, you got exposed to other forms of language, other types of language. That's it. And dance is language. So every, every society whoops, develops his or her own vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, but typical, wonderful Caribbean people, mm -hmm. we expose ourselves to absolutely every language there is going. Oh, yes. So you end up in dance being multilingual in dance in actual fact uh -huh. okay so let's kind of dive in even further but you also worked with Beryl McBurney at some point well this is where I met Beryl for the first time mm -hmm. because Beryl is one of the um, tutors mm -hmm. Beryl Rex Nettleford mm -hmm. um, Ivy Baxter this is, this is where I met um, Beryl for the first time did you know somebody called Ben Johnson I knew of him but we never met but he was here very very early on in the 40s yes I think in, England. in England yes, yes. yes. Okay, um, let us kind of just dive in. There's a, a fascinating photo here, yeah. um, which I quite, because I, as a child, I knew of this. We grew up with it there. I can see it between your glasses. Tell me a bit about it. What? Which one? There's a picture there of Dorothy Dandridge, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, Island of the Sun was made in Grenada. And I, without knowing, changed a few things when we did some entertaining for the stars and the crew etc at Santa Maria Hotel. The same Mr. Dudley Slinger, he was more or less managing us, staged this show at the Santa Maria and in that we did the limbo as part of our act. But what, tell me a bit about limbo. Well, this is almost our national dance in the West Indies. But limbo uh, with two sticks, everyone has a different story mm -hmm. saying that the slaves escaped by bending backwards under barbed wire, etc., etc. But it's like in the long run, it ended up as a competition. Who can go the lowest to escape or to have fun? One of the best choreographers and the most profound choreographers of Limbo is Julia Edwards. Uh, she did not do it as basic entertainment. She actually brought a whole lot of poetic sensibilities to the form. Um, and it was, nobody else has actually choreographed um, Limbo to that level as Julia Edwards. Um, and again, it's that thing about when we speak of our own culture, it gets kind of dismissed. But I would think it, it came out of something like the liberation, and it was an expression. It was used as a metaphor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for um, for for escaping mm -hmm. the rots of enslavement. Mm -hmm. So I really, really hold and maybe you know onto that that story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me a bit about the photo now. Well, this photo is with Dorothy Dandridge, mm -hmm. film star who was starring in Island in the Sun. And I had to teach her the limbo simply because, as I said earlier, when Darren F. Zanuck saw my company working. Who is that, Zanuck? Darren F. Zanuck was the producer of 20th Century Fox in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And he was there to supervise the production of Island in the Sun. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, uh, when you do limbo, we invite the audience to partake. Mm -hmm. And we had them coming in. We had Harry Belafonte, we had James Mason, we had Joan Collins, and then Dorothy Dandridge. And I tell you, she raised us, Tom, when she came and went on the stick. Poetry in motion. So, that and my dancers around her excited Mr. Um, producer, Daryl F. Zanuck, to include this particular thing in the film because it was never there. It's a carnival scene, but the limbo was never there. So I could say, yes, we did it, and they invited us to join because it was a very colorful scene in Ireland, and for those who've seen it. And that is you standing next to Dorothy. That is me, dear, when I was slim and young and ready. I'm still ready. <laughs> okay, like Freddie. Okay. Yeah, yes. All right, jumping quickly, let's yeah. just move slightly forward. You came to England in what time? 1958. I see a photo here. Um, 
another one it's of um wow i think that is carmen monroe and is that nina bade and semper next door let's have a look uh, yes that's yes, you yes. above there yes. actually yes, yes that's in england isn't it yes okay tell me a bit about that and this is choreographed by beryl mcburney mm -hmm. right um we did this in canterbury the, the church in canterbury and it's a festival going on there mm -hmm. it's called the prodigal son mm -hmm. and nina i was the devil's disciple mm -hmm. and nina and carmen were the temptresses and um that's it that's part of the um the scene in in the prodigal son this is in canterbury it's yes. also because in those days there were very little avenue for dance the churches were very good in actual fact in spaces for dance isn't it yeah and there were sometimes good places to rehearse you know in the churches yeah the churches definitely opened their doors to dance at that point in time in the whole they were very instrumental in the development of dance isn't it well they helped yeah they helped yeah. well yeah very very because mm. rehearsal space is crucial mm -hmm. i mean now we're suffering for cru for rehearsal space oh, like yes. you just would not yes. like to know yes um yes yeah, so um tell me a bit about um so when you choreographed in england because you did do some choreography in in um in in england tell me a bit about that yes well um because of island and the sun mm -hmm. when i came here I, my company appeared, guest appeared in the Shirley Bassey show mm -hmm. called Chelsea at Nine. From then, we got another contact, which was based on the Island of the Sun contact, to choreograph for a television, one episode of a tele television series called Night Errant Limited. And I choreographed a very brief scene in that, right? Mm -hmm. But my big one here, choreographing, is the carnival. Mm -hmm. Carnival in England. Mm -hmm. Indoors. That's mm -hmm. where it started. Mm -hmm. Claudia Jones' mm -hmm. disease. She excited and ignited and encouraged. Mm -hmm. And she staged the first Caribbean carnival, Trinidad carnival, mm -hmm. at King's Cross. Right, and then it went from one town hall to the next. It went to it was in Pancras, St. Pancras I guess. and then it went to, to Seymour, uh -huh. Seymour town hall, and then it's headed for the streets, mm -hmm. right? So, but then you also did a lot of choreography for cabarets. Yes, I did in the days when cabaret was was exotic and sophisticated and respected highly. I'm not saying it's not respected today, uh -huh. but I mean it was a big big thing. It's almost, it was almost like a, a, a vignette, a small narrative of a, of a Western play because you had to, the whole choreography had to be theatrical. Yes. In a way, almost very contemporary. Yes, it's a review. You yeah, know? it's yeah. a contemporary narrative in, mm -hmm. of that period. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing had to be considered. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, um, so tell me a bit about the choreography for that. Well, I did something at the Churchill nightclub mm -hmm. and then I subsequently worked with Bosco Holder at the Mayfair, the Candlelight Rooms, mm -hmm. and a few um, hotels um, around the city. Mm -hmm. And then I went out to Birmingham, Manchester, to do various things here and there, weekend, week, whatever, touring. So you're always spreading the dance? Yeah. Um, and did you find when you were dancing in the nightclubs or in the well at the Mayfair Hotel mm -hmm. because those were big big stages oh yes and the cabaret as you said in those days were like a show it's a small show yes yes you know just like how you have a musical or now yes and stuff so it was it wasn't it the whole thing had to be thought of considered costuming staging lighting all of that was oh yes it was big times because yeah. take for example people like Ella Fitzgerald and Lena Horne appeared in these places mm -hmm. they had a star mm -hmm. it's like the the Palladium, for example, they were the sort of equivalent to. Mm -hmm. um, there were various venues for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the whole kind of, st you all were bringing a new form of dance to Britain. Yes. We were in a variety show, and we were bringing what we had from our country. And what, tell me a bit about what you had from your country. Well, I brought folk dance from my country. What is folk dance? West Indian folk dance, based on our um, everyday life, or the African tradition, and the complete potpourri of all the cultures we had boiled into one bully, one mortar. Tell me a bit about the potpourri 
of cultures? Well, we had African dance, mm -hmm. which is called Nation Dance. Mm -hmm. We had um, we had the, the French um, element. Then we had the English um, mm -hmm. with the quadrille, etc., etc. And then our main thing was bongo and, and, and ballet. Those are the two dances that stood out mm -hmm. from the um, the repertoire of, of, of but a, but when I started to dance, and I'm just about a little bit younger than you are. The use of the spiral, the use of the contraction, mm -hmm. the use of the torso, it wasn't in that kind of very horizontal um, or, or vertical manner. In actual fact, we used the spiral and the pelvis and our connectivity to the floor, to the earth. Yeah. So therefore the dance, as we are speaking about it, wasn't on straight lines principles. It was, in in a way, I found it very mixing as well as the African because the African had this kind of undulation of the spine and the pelvis mm -hmm. but the Indian had a kind of spiral right um, and the way the use of the back yeah. and the use of the feet mm -hmm. so there was a kind of mixture in the use of the feet from the flex foot to that amazing demi point mm -hmm. that comes from the Indian dynamic mm -hmm. so um, so I don't know if in your generation you were using that spiral and that's why we use a lot of fluid cloth so when we move so it's very much in a way very what we'll call Graham-esque or contemporary mm -hmm. but it is actually of those cultures yeah yeah well I mean say give it a title give it a name Graham-esque whatever um, Paul Primus, Beryl Maboni you know Catherine or, Dunham Catherine Dunham yeah yeah mm -hmm. um, but you see, again, we danced in, in, in the Caribbean, and we still do, in that we danced with our entire bodies, and then we would adapt to other dances and, 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 and disciplines. But really and truly, when we heard music, we danced. As a matter of fact, one of these articles that this um, writer um, did about my company, said, he said that when we dance, we dance with everything, our eyes, our toes, our head. Is this, is this, is this, um, is this, this picture here? That's I think it. That's